My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional biking kit tester for nearly 25 years. And today, I'm doing a quick tech talk on the Trek Top Fuel 8. An absolutely brilliant bike, except at the one thing it's kind of supposed to be. But, so, we'll go through the positives first and then uh, deal with that potential negative at the end, because it's not something you'll be able to see. So, Top Fuel 8 is the top alloy bike in the Trek Top Fuel range. Uh, there is a 5 and a 7. Don't know what the 6 did to offend them, but, it, you know, it starts, the range starts at 2,700, and this bike is 3,850, and then the carbon bike range starts with a 9.7 at 4,700. So, you're getting some, you're getting some decent kit on this. They've gone for the classic highlight the rear mech option there with an XT, and then you've got an SLX crank set, which is a perfectly decent crank set, and uh, then you've got Dior brakes. So it kind of falls off a bit with the Dior brakes. They're okay, rotors are a bit soft. I mean, these are the four-pot ones, so they actually stop okay, even with the 160mm rotor on the back. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a mixed, mixed bag uh, in terms of the stop-and-go equipment. One definite highlight is the fact that all the uh, RockShox equipped bikes in the range, they do Fox and RockShox, all of them get this RockShox Deluxe Ultimate rear shock on there. So that's a real highlight. You get the full lockout and uh, low speed compression gate on there, uh, adjustable rebound as you expect. But basically, it's just a really, really smooth shock. And for this year, they've also moved to a trunnion mount, which means it's in bearings on the top there. And the shock is now the right way up. It was inverted previously. Plus, you get Trek's little Mino link. I mean, they were, they'd been doing adjustable geometry for years. So uh, that just changes, it basically changes everything by about four mil in terms of numbers and about 0.4 of a degree as well. So it's relatively easy to remember what it does. Not a massive effect, but uh, that means on this bike, you've got a, uh, a 66 degree head angle or 66.4 if you run it in high, a 76 or 76.4 degree seat angle, which, you know, pretty steep actually. And then as this is a medium large, which is, I mean, I think, again, this is a real positive with the Trek range. You get this medium large size, which is, as you, you know, as you might have guessed, it's kind of between uh, medium and large. So it's a four six. 465 or 469 reach on this bike, whereas I think the large is 480 or 484. I'll have to check that. I'll put it in the captions if not, that's quite right. But it's in that ballpark figure. And you've got relatively short seat tubes on there. So even though they uh, run a long dropper post as standard, dropper post demo coming up. Uh, I think this is this is a 150, but on the extra large models, they'll even run a 200 mil shaft. And you can see they've actually upsized the seat tube now to 34.9 so when you're getting a longer stroke shaft it's still decent stiff you're not uh, creating some kind of weird all sorts soft ride twang on there if you don't know what i'm looking if you don't know what i'm talking about because i'm old google it you'll get a shock but anyway back to the frame you've got you know trek alpha aluminium really nice lots of uh, shaping and button going on here and just like the carbon bikes you get a storage hatch in here so as you can see you got a little Bontrager sleeve in there and it actually comes with a tube and co2 kit in there as well I mean to be fair it's a bit constricted you've got this uh, plastic uh, gate around the top of it and uh, so it's quite it's quite a fight to actually get the tube in there sorry it's quite a fight to get the tube out of there and that's even though uh, Trek have actually used a very sort of slim lightweight uh, yellow tube as their giveaway tube so it's kind of it's almost like a space saver spare out of a uh, you know out of a hatchback or something, so you know not the biggest capacity, but you know better than nothing in terms of internal storage, and you've got internal cable routing, and you've got Trex knock block uh, steering lock system there, which has been extended in swing now. In terms of steering lock, it used to be under 60 degrees, so you very rarely notice it uh, when you're riding the bike, but it just stops the controls coming around and hitting the top tube. And if you don't like the idea of it, you can uh, just change that for a blank chip anyway. And then down here, so you can't really see it, you've now got a threaded bottom bracket, not a press fit bottom bracket. So uh, that's that's a bonus in terms of long-term serviceability. And you've got these molded chain guards on there as well. And final sort of Trek uh, signature feature, ABP, uh, active braking pivot. So the rear pivot actually runs concentric through the rear axle and that you know it creates a really really neutral uh, pedaling and braking feel uh, you get really nuanced kind of 
supple traction from the from the back end of the bike, especially now it's got this uh, Deluxe Ultimate Shock on there. And then because it's meant to be an XC downcountry bike, you get a uh, SID fork up front. Uh, I'm sure to say, you know, 120 mil travel front and rear, and you know, lightweight 35 mil chassis. But this is the basic SID uh, with just the rush damper in there, they call it. So uh, it's it's an OEM only. You can't actually buy this fork aftermarket. So uh, relatively, you know, relatively simple damper in there, which if you watch the live ride review, you will start to see uh, get uncomfortable as the before the back end's really into its stride as such. But the interesting thing is, although it's meant to be a sort of downcountry XC bike, it's actually in the XC category on the Trek website. If you, I mean, just look at it. It's a pretty much a trail spec. You've got these big, chunky XL4 2.4 inch 29er tires on there, uh, 780 mil bar, 45 mil length stem. Again, we've already got that large diameter dropper post. And you've got, you know, relatively chunky rims uh, with slow pickup uh, DT Swiss style hubs on the rear, which to be fair is a good job as you've only got a 160 mil rotor and I think it'd be struggling with the two parts on there. But, you know, the top fuel has always been Trek's race bike and, you know, apart from the Super Caliber, which is their sort of, you know, pure, almost race soft tail with the uh, uh, shock hidden in the top tube, which I think is only 60 mil of travel. This is the one, well, it's categorized as XC or down country in their website. But the trouble is with this kit on, the whole bike comes in at 14.4 kilos, which just isn't a cross country, down country weight. Uh, you know, it's, it's a hefty bike. And that's particularly obvious when you compare it to the Trek Fuely X8, which, you know, comes with 2.6 inch tires. It's got more travel. It's 140 front. It's 130 rear and slightly cheaper in the top alloy framed version. So it's kind of a bit of a weird placement of this bike. And while this alloy frame is 3.7 kilos, uh, it, even if you go up to the carbon frame, that's still 2.7 kilos. So that's very heavy for a uh, XC downcountry style frame. You know, you should be looking at the low two kilos, preferably under two kilos, really, to be competitive in that category. And it's not like it's a cheap frame either. I mean, sold separately, this bar, this frame is 2,350 uh, quid at the moment, which, you know, is 1,500 quid lighter than the carbon bike. But, you know, that that's a serious chunk of money for an alloy frame, you know, because they've had to spend a lot of time getting that, uh, you know, getting that uh, internal storage in there and all the other features on it. You know, it is not, like I say, it's not, it's a high quality aluminium frame, but to get the strength and stiffness in there and that, you know, bottle cage, and even then, I mean, sorry, it's not quite properly in here, but even then you can see, it's only just fitting a uh, medium-sized bottle in there. You're not gonna get a large bottle into that uh, bottle cage. And remember, this is the medium L. But, oh, one thing I would say in its favor, you do get a really, really broad range of sizes uh, from Czech. So not just the medium large, but you also get extra small and extra, extra large as well. So you're, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to find a really, really good fit on this bike. And the great news is, is go and watch the live ride review and you'll see it is an absolutely brilliant short travel ripper. So as long as you're happy kind of categorizing it on its strengths, not uh, believing the XC downcountry hype on it, then this is still a brilliant bike. And if you look online, it's had loads and loads of absolutely stellar reviews from people who kind of seem to have ignored the weight aspect really but then maybe you know they don't like chasing e-bikes as a hobby like i do and you know and maybe they haven't ridden something properly light recently because there are some super capable short travel genuinely lightweight bikes around for example if you you can actually spend less money on a spark and still get a carbon frame and the bike would be two kilos lighter with the same travel than this top fuel eight which kind of again you know, leaves this uh, top fuel a little stranded in terms of comparison with others. I mean, like I say, I can talk through the uh, static specs, you know, all day uh, and not really give you an idea how it rides. So uh, what I would uh, ask you to do politely is uh, go check out the uh, live ride review I'm about to shoot on this mic and see me get massively excited about how well this bike rides. But then there'll be a bit at the end where I go, oh, but it's really heavy, which kind of makes it a bit... Eh. Yeah.
and I guess that's what I've just said again twice. So, uh, massive thanks to uh, Trek for sending the bike in anyway. Uh, thanks to Giro Cycling UK, Peaties and Crud for sponsoring the channel. Uh, if you really like what I'm doing on the channel, please consider sponsoring me on Patreon for extended ad-free edits. Uh, but for now, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kest TV talking about the tech of Trek's Top Fuel 8.